So if everyone's good to go, we can get started. Um, so good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Brainy Boomer Lecture Series. We're so very happy that you guys have all joined us today. So in 2007, the McGill University Research Center for Studies in Aging, or the MCSA's Education Committee, started the Brainy Boomer Lecture Series in order to suggest practical steps to both improve and maintain brain health, as well as to promote healthy lifestyle choices amongst the most populous generation in history. The MCSA's Education Committee, which was founded in 1996, has three main objectives. Identifying education needs of healthcare providers, seniors, caregivers, and the public, and to, meet some, some and to develop some responses to meet some of those needs. To enhance the image of the aging process by addressing stereotypes and myths about aging, and the dissemination of research on aging. Before continuing, we would just like to remind you to please mute your microphone on Zoom, and if you have any questions, please wait until the end of the conference, or you could write them down in the chat box on Zoom. And now for the moment we've been waiting for, I present TechSurf Toronto's co-founder, Daniel Morello, with TechSurf Toronto's Zoom workshop. All right, hello everyone. So as, as she previously explained, uh, this is just gonna be a quick uh, workshop on how to use Zoom, basic tips and tricks so you'll be able to navigate the platform and be able to contact loved ones or friends, et cetera, et cetera. So a little bit about me. Uh, I am Daniel Morello. I'm one of the co-founders of TechServe TO. A little bit more about me in terms of specifics. I am currently a neuroscience graduate student at McMaster University. Uh, I often spend most of my day in Zoom meetings, whether I'm doing it for my company, TechServe TO, or whether I'm doing meetings with my research supervisor. And I love to help my grandparents with technology. And this became particularly important during the COVID-19 pan uh, COVID pandemic when they were contacting loved ones back home in Italy. So a little bit more about my company, TechServe TO. So we're a nonprofit organization that started in April of 2020, so very recently. So we provide free technical support tailored for seniors with the primary goal of keeping them in contact with loved ones during the COVID-19 pandemic. So we started off firstly by providing one-on-one -on -one technical support that, that's administered e either via telephone or online video chat platforms like Zoom. And now we've essentially transitioned to do live group workshops like what we're doing now, as well as pre-recorded tutorials covering particular online topics. So in terms of our logistics, over the past five months, we've helped over 610 seniors and we've accumulated a volunteer population of about 175 people. And we've been featured on numerous news sources such as the Toronto Star, the Globe and Mail, Global News, and the Toronto Sun. All right. So what we'll learn today is in multiple aspects in terms of learning Zoom. So first we're gonna teach you how to set up Zoom and then how to log in, how to make a call, how to schedule a Zoom meeting, and how to use some of the Zoom basic functions. All right, so pretty much walk you through the Zoom process as well as leave some time for a Q&A. So the first step that we'll do is how to download Zoom and how to set up an account. So we're gonna do this from the perspective of a Windows computer. So how to set up Zoom, First, you go to the search tab on your uh, button on your desktop, so it'll be the magnifying glass here. And then you'll click on it and type Google Chrome or any other search engine um, that you particularly use, like Firefox or Safari, et cetera, et cetera. For people that are on Mac, you, you know that your Safari will be your Safari button will be at the bottom menu, and you can just press on that to go to that browser. Okay, and then so in the search windows here, what you'll do is type in your particular browser. In this case, I have Google Chrome. And then what you're going to do is double click on the search engine here. All right, so what's, what it's gonna do is it's gonna open you to the home page of your browser. So what you can do is either by typing in here or by typing in here, you can uh, type search download Zoom. So you could just have to type that in. So then once you type that in, what, what it's gonna do is show you, show you a bunch of different results. But what you're gonna look for is, some, is this, which says download center Zoom. So what you're gonna do is click on the search result that says download center Zoom. So what it will do is it will bring you to the, to the Zoom homepage 
oh, well, particularly its download center. And then what you're going to do is you're going to click on this big blue button that says download soon. All right. And then at the bottom of the, of the screen, a box will appear that says Zoom Installer EXE. So you see here. So what, what you're going to do is once you download, this is going to show up, which just means that it's essentially downloading the Zoom app onto your computer. So what you have to do is you have to wait a couple minutes for it to fully download and then click on the button. All right, congrats. So Zoom has now been downloaded onto your computer. So next, what we need to do is create a Zoom account. So what you're gonna do uh, is you're gonna go back to that search button on your computer, that magnifying glass button I identified earlier. And now you're gonna start, then you're gonna type in Zoom in the search bar. So then what you'll see is a Zoom app here, which is the white camera with the blue border. And then you're just gonna click on it. So then what it will do is you'll, it will bring you to the Zoom homepage, which looks like this. So what you're gonna do is although uh, it looks misleading, you need to press on the sign in button even though you haven't made an account yet. So just press on sign in. Okay, so as you can see here, when you go to the sign in button, it's gonna bring you to this menu where it gives you the options to provide your credentials for when you wanna sign in again after you've already made your account. So your email, your password, sign in. And then it also gives you the option to link your Zoom to your Facebook account. If you have a Facebook account already signed in on the computer, a Google account, so like your Gmail, as well as SSO. So since we haven't made an account yet, we can't do any of those things. So what we have to do is press on this button that says sign up free. All right. So once you press on sign up free, it's going to bring you to this page. So what you're going to have to do is provide an email that you want to associate with your account. So in this case, we use johndoe at gmail.com. It can be a work email. It can be a personal email. It doesn't really matter. And then you're going to press on the blue sign up button. So then once you press on that button, it's going to bring you to this page and you're going to start the verification process. So what you're going to do is you're going to enter the month, day, and year of birth. And then once all those are filled in appropriately, this button continues is going to highlight in blue and then you're going to press continue. So then after you do this, you'll be presented with, with what's called recaptcha verification. This simply means that it's going to show you a series of images and you have to click on the appropriate images in order to verify. So in this case, what's bolded here is what they're asking for. So you have to select all the images that uh, begin with crosswalks. I'm going to press this image, this image, and this image, and then I'm going to press verify. So in the case of recapture verification, it honestly varies uh, uh, on the pictures that they want or they, that they want you to click. For example, this could have been select all the images with cars. So I would press this image or select all the images with greenery. So I would pick this image, this image, and this image. So it really just depends. It's, it's randomized. So once you pick the appropriate boxes, click verify, and then it will take you to the next step. All right. So now what it's done is that it sent a confirmation email to, uh, to your email account, which essentially just means that you need to essentially confirm that this is in fact you deciding to make this account, and then you can proceed with filling in more of the credentials for the account. So what you'll do is you just have to go back to your email account, sign into your email account, and you should receive an email that looks like this an email from no reply at zoom.us. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna press on that email, it's gonna bring you to here, and then what you're gonna to have to do is press on the big blue button that says activate account. So now it gives you the option of signing up on behalf of a school or not. So this is, this is provided for students, especially considering the transition to online learning where a lot of universities have created dedicated accounts uh, or you can associate your account with your university so that it's free for the extended meetings that you have. Because one of the limitations of Zoom is that if you wanna have a meeting over 40 minutes long, 
you, ha you would have to start paying. But if you're an associated with an institution, you wouldn't have to pay. In the case of us, because we're creating a personal account, you're gonna have to press on this button that says no, and then press continue. So then it's gonna bring you to this page. So you just have to fill out the appropriate cred credentials. Your first name, your last name, your password, and then you're gonna enter your password again to confirm, and then press continue. So then, if your password doesn't work, then you have to make sure that they have these particular credentials. So your password must be at least eight characters long, have at least one letter, have at least one number, and include both uppercase and lowercase letters in order to be a proper uh, functioning password for Zoom. So then it gives you the option to not Zoom alone. This essentially means that if you know the emails or the passwords or essentially the uh, accounts of your loved ones or friends, you can add them on right away. Or you, can, you, or you can share your account with multiple people. In this case, we want you to just have your basic account for yourself. So we're just gonna press on skip this step. All right, and then congrats, you have now uh, created a Zoom account. So in the next segment, we're going to just teach you how to log in subsequent, uh, like subsequently after. So you've created your Zoom account, so you don't have to create it again. So now you just have to sign in over and over again, or you can even save your credentials so you only have to sign in once. So what you're going to do is you're going to go back to the search button on your computer and type in Zoom again. And then you're going to double click on the Zoom app again, which is, as stated before, is the, is the white camera with the blue border. So then it's gonna bring you back to this homepage that we've seen before. So now you're gonna press the sign in button again, but this time, rather than pressing sign up free, all you have to do is provide your credentials. So provide your email and your password that you associated with the account, or in the case that you've, you've associated your, um, your Zoom account with your Facebook, Google, or SSO, you just gotta press this particular button and it will, link you, it will link it to the logged in Facebook, Google, or SSO account. All right, and then once you fill out the required credentials, you can have the option of keep, of keep me signed in, which is what I mentioned before, which is essentially by keeping you signed in, you don't have to sign into your uh, account over and over and over and over again uh, while you're using the Zoom app. Uh, the Zoom will, the app will essentially save it so that next time you enter the Zoom app, you'll already be directly transferred into your account. Now, I recommend if you choose this option that you write down your Zoom credentials just in case uh, you have to sign out of the account. Like, for example, someone else has to use their account or you get a new computer, et cetera, so that you can transfer your Zoom account over to the new device or be able to sign in again. And then you just have to press, in the sign, press on the sign in button to continue. So congrats, now you're logged into Zoom, which will bring you into this menu. All right, so now we're gonna teach you, I'm gonna teach you how to make a call on Zoom. So there are two ways of essentially, uh, there are two perspectives in terms of calling. So if you wanna start your own call or your own meeting, you're gonna click on the new, meet, new meeting button. Well, if you're joining someone else's meeting, you gotta press on this button that says join. So I'll go into more details for both paths. So, how to make a call on Zoom when you're the one starting the meeting. So once you press on that new meeting button, it's gonna bring you to here, which we are all, all, we are all on currently. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna click on the I logo on the very top. So you see the I with the little circle on the top left corner. You're gonna press on that. So what it's gonna do, one second. All right, so there are two ways to invite someone to a Zoom meeting. It's gonna bring you this information. So you can tell them the meeting ID here and they can enter it onto their Zoom account or you can click copy URL and then send them an email with, and paste the link into the email or further if you have like a Facebook account or an Instagram account or a, or a cell phone, you can text them or message them the particular URL so that they can join the group. And then, in the, and then in addition to this, you will also need to give them the meeting password, which they will have to type in to join here. 
So there's actually an option not to have a password, but that essentially leads to security risk so that anyone who has the meeting ID or happens to get the URL could be able to sign in. And I recommend just having this extra level of security just so that you can have private conversations with the people that you want to talk to because it's very easy uh, uh, for other people or unwanted people to join the meeting when you don't have this particular password set. Okay, so now I'm going to show you from the perspective if you're joining an existing meeting. So what you have to do is once you press on that join meeting button from before, you're going to have to uh, get the option of entering the meeting ID. So essentially what, we, what I explained here, the meeting ID or the URL link, when you're joining a meeting, the other person has to send these credentials to you. So you can enter your meeting ID and this should be provided by the owner of the meeting invite. And then you can enter your name. You can enter a name that's consistent. So you can enter with your actual name or you can make whatever name that you want, a nickname, just a funny name, et cetera, et cetera. But I recommend just for the sake of consistency, just to put the name that you associated with your Zoom account. And then you can click the blue join button and then you'll be able to join the meeting. All right, so now I'm gonna teach you how to schedule a Zoom meeting. All right, so what you're gonna do is we're, we're back in this main Zoom page once you've signed in. So we're gonna click on the schedule button on the Zoom homepage. All right, so now it's gonna bring you to this menu. So you can choose the name of your meeting here. And then you could choose the date and time of your meeting. In this case, I put June 15th, 2020 and 7 p.m. So with the scheduling function, you know, this you can essentially plan a meeting and have emails sent out to individuals ahead of time so that the meeting can be organized ahead of time rather than having to contact people, just make a meeting and contact people like, hey, can you join the meeting? So then you can choose how long you want the meeting to last. So in this case, I put the duration as one hour. And then what you have to do is write down the meeting password to tell your attendees. So, okay, I set the meeting password as 961597. So I have to make sure to send those people the password because they need the meeting ID as well as the password in order to sign in. And then what you wanna do is make sure the video is selected on so that you'll be able to converse with people face to face. And then make sure Canada is selected for dial-in. What you're gonna have to do is click edit. And then I'll go into more detail in the next slide in regards to that. And then once all these different credentials are set up, what you're gonna do is click on the blue button that says schedule button. So for this sixth step, I added an extra slide because it gets a little complicated once you press on the edit button. So once you press on the edit button, your edit button, you're uh, brought to this page. So what you have to do is you have the option to search for the particular country or you can scroll down based on alphabetical order. Uh, to see which country you want to dial from, in this case, Canada. So I just scrolled down, oops, sorry. Just scrolled down and then uh, I just pressed on Canada. And then once you have set it to Canada, you click the blue done button. All right, and then if you want meeting information to be sent to your attendees, what will happen is that after you schedule the meeting, you'll be brought back to your main page. And then what you have to do is press on the three dots next to the meeting. And then what you have to do is then copy invita uh, invitation slash link, depending on which platform you're utilizing, and then paste that link into an email. Or like I said before, you can text it to someone or copy it and put it into a Facebook message or even an Instagram message. All right, so uh, now we're on the last thing that we're gonna learn today is how to use some basic Zoom functions when you're essentially in the middle of a meeting. All right, so the first thing, first button here is to join audio so that you're able to hear other people and that other people are able to hear you. And then you can click on the start video button so that people can see you. So you can see it's X'd here. What you have to do is press on it and make sure that red X, that red slash disappears. And then you also know because you'll be able to see your own face. And then you'll be able to click to view who is in the meeting by pressing on this button that says participants. Then you can uh, see the chat and be able to talk to people via messaging by pressing on the chat button. And then you can share your computer screen by pressing on this button just in case you wanna show people particular things. So what I'm doing right now is I press the share screen button so that you guys can be able to see this PowerPoint. All right, and then 
you can make the meeting a full screen by, uh, by pressing on this button, enter full screen. And then you can end the meeting if you are the host or leave the meeting if you aren't the host, if you're just a member of the meeting, not a co-host. And all these different buttons, I'll go into more detail. So when you're, joining a, uh, when you're joining audio, there's actually three different ways that you can join a meeting. The first way is to call in. So essentially you can manually call into the meeting using your phone number. This is especially good if internet is very spotty. Um, so since you can be able to hear clearly everything through your phone without requiring the internet. So what you'll do is that once you press the join audio button, it's going to bring you to this menu. So the first option is phone call. So what you have to do is dial one of the numbers on the screen and make sure your country is set to Canada here. And then what you have to do is, what, uh, is when the voice on the phone says, enter your meeting ID and press pound. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna have to enter your meeting ID here and then press the pound button on your phone. And then when the voice says, enter your participant ID, then you're gonna have to put the bolded number uh, you have to type the bolded number onto your phone, and then you'll be able to join the meet, the audio of your phone to the meeting. So then the second way is just directly using the computer, the computer's audio. So what you'll have to do is in that same menu from before, you're going to have to press on the computer audio button here. And then what you have to do is then press uh, join with computer audio, and then it will join to your computer. Always make sure that the, your volume is on because when you join with your computer and your volume is off, then it will seem that uh, you can't hear other people or people can't hear you. So just make sure that your computer volume is on. So then the final way is call me, which is essentially the opposite of the phone call. Rather than you calling the number, you're gonna get Zoom to call you. So you press on call me, then you change your area code to Canada. In this case, it's by pressing this drop down menu. In this case, we know Canada is plus one. And then enter your phone number and then press call me and wait for the phone call. And then once you answer the phone call, your audio will be joined to the meeting. All right. So now we're going to talk about the participants button. So the general theme of Zoom is when you press a lot of these buttons, it's going to result in a, side, uh, in a menu on the right side where you'll be able to utilize these different functions. So if you want to see who is in the meeting, click on the participants icon. Then this right panel will appear. And then you can see the number of participants in the meeting. In this case, it's just me or just my, the volunteer, Jonathan, and who they are. All right. And then for the chat button, if you want to chat with participants over text, click the chat icon, and then it will bring you to this right panel again. And then you can see the group chat. So you can send links or ask questions by typing in the message box that says type message here. So you have to click on the type message here, and then be, it will allow you to type a message on uh, your keyboard to people in the group. So as you can see here, it's set to everyone, but if there's only a particular individual you wanna send a message to privately, you would have to type in the individual's name or their, their, like their Zoom name in the group. All right, so then if you're hosting and you want to end the meeting, you can click the red button that says end, and then a box will appear on the top right-hand corner, so you have this right-hand panel menu again, and then you can end the meeting for all by pressing the red button. So this just ends the meeting for everyone, everyone's kicked out of the Zoom page, the conversation is over. However, if you want to leave the other participants, but it still allow them to continue to converse to themselves, what you can do is press the leave meeting, and this will just have you just leave the meeting so that other people can remain in the Zoom chat so that they can continue to converse and talk to each other. All right, so that's pretty much it. You are now a Zoom expert. Any questions? All right, thank you so much for that presentation, Daniel. Yeah. Um, does anybody have any questions? Yeah, I have a question. Yes, yeah. Dr. DeStore. When I enter in the chat box and, and when I, there's everyone <clears throat> and I write what I want to write and I press my enter key so that it doesn't show up to in, the, in the main screen and I see other people showing up their chats in the screen, am I doing something wrong? 
Um, so your particular chat doesn't show up on the screen. It's most likely because when you send the message, Zoom doesn't give you the notification of your message entering the chat. It only lets you know when other people are messaging because it knows it's, it's essentially assuming that because you're the one who sent the message, you already know about that message. So they don't want oh, to send see. you with notification. Because it comes up in the chat uh, screen and in the yeah, side yeah. screen, it comes up. I can see there, but I don't see it on the main screen. Yeah, you, you don't get notifications for your own messages because it assumes that you, you know that you sent that message. Well, you, you get to see notifications of messages from other people in the group. Okay, thank you. That yeah. helps. Yeah. I have a question. Yeah. Um, must I have a Google, uh, uh, a Zoom account uh, to join a meeting? Because today I went to a, the... Um, what is it? The bright, the uh, event bright. Yeah, yeah. And they said that because I thought they were going to send me a, a link to to join automatically. Yeah. And I didn't get a link. I had to go to this bright place and give my password, and then I was able to to um, press on something on the on the screen and join the meeting. But I have been using my Zoom account with other um, places and I just, you know, press my Zoom button on the um, dock yeah. and it opens up my Zoom, Zoom. And yeah. I, I just press join a meeting and I have the, the, um, the uh, link the, and, and if there was a password that they give me and, I, and yeah. it's fine, but I, don't, but I don't have a particular Zoom account. Yeah, so you can you can still navigate Zoom without a Zoom account. Um, be, honestly, to be honest with you guys, I don't I don't have a Zoom account myself. I usually right. just navigate for my personal stuff. It's not a, it's not a big deal to not have a Zoom account. It's just uh, when you want to create your own meetings, you would probably need a Zoom account. Right, that's, that's what I'm, benefit. and that's what I'm not doing. So yeah. today, I did not get the link sent to me the other woman that was i should have gotten a link and, yeah. and and it would pop up on the screen and and i'd be able to um and they would give me the password and or whatever the the code yeah. to to log in because yeah. i don't have to have anything to to put in there yeah absolutely because you're just getting invited as a participant right so which uh, I if you're given the credentials you can still join a zoom meeting without a zoom account it's right. more for your own convenience uh, for example, like the reason why, like I taught my grandparents Zoom when they wanted to contact loved ones, is because they wanted to set up Zoom meetings to, with okay. family during the COVID nineteen pandemic. It just gives you that option to create your own meetings. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, we have another question here. Someone would like to know how to share their screen. Oh, okay. So let me see. Let me go back to this menu so you can see. Yeah. So, so what it's going to do is you see this button here that says Share Screen. You're gonna press on it, and then it's gonna show you a menu where it gives you images of your screen. So it gives you the option to like share your whole screen or that you can share particular aspects of your screen. So it'll give you a bunch of like different images that will look like your screen because it is looking, it's accessing your screen, and you just have to press on one of them, and then it will allow you to share your screen. So it all starts by pressing the share screen button. Yes, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, what do you do if you want to change hosts for the meeting? Change hosts. So what you yeah. can usually do is you go to the participants and then it gives you an option option there to essentially change to essentially change over to the host and give them host status by pressing on the person's username. So <laughs> I don't have it explicit here on the on the screen so bear with me but you'd have to press and it will give you the option if when you press on the person's name it would give you a drop down menu with an option to give them co-host so it gives you the option to even kick the person out of the meeting uh to give them co-host status to make, message them personally etc cetera, etc cetera. okay and then if the co-host wants to uh host the next meeting they have to start again with uh getting a new meeting number and and password for all so if you give them co-host status then you could then and you don't revoke it you can they can essentially start the meeting in the same meeting room themselves if they've wanted because in you the them okay. co-host status okay okay 
and, and otherwise it's change host and, and it's they start again. Yeah. Thank you. Are there any other questions? All right. Well, if thank I, you. No, yeah, no, 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 no. I have to get lit. I yes. want to ask you if, uh, if we, are, we are on a Zoom thing and I want to go to my desktop and I want to check something, can I do that? Can I minimize it? Can I go and check and come back? Yeah, absolutely. So it's because it's, a, it's attached to your browser, it has the same options where you can minimize the screen on the top left hand corner. And then also this button here that says enter full screen. When you're in full screen, yeah. you can press it again to enter in part screen, and then you can yeah. click on other apps and stuff and navigate through while it's in the background. So you can have Zoom in the background, but it will still show your faces if you are looking at Zoom. You okay. know what I'm saying? So it would just still be connected to your camera, but you can surf other, other apps or other pages while you're on the Zoom account, and it, will, and it will look as if you're still looking at the Zoom account. Okay, thank you. No problem. Are there any other questions? There was a question there. Yep, so we just have one right here. It says, I have not yet seen the home page. Uh, I'm auto automatically sent the sign in page. How do you get to the home screen? To so the like the the general home screen? I believe so, yes. Like the one where you've already signed in? Is that, is that what the one that they're talking about? Where you have like the ad meeting, like the, like the, different, like the different tools there? Um, I believe so, it's not specified though. Okay, well, if they're doing that, what they'd have to do is if they haven't created an account yet, they would have to create the account by pressing like the sign in button and then navigating through. Let me go, let me go all the way back there. Yes, it's, I had the question. I, I sign in and everything's fine, but I don't see the, the, the page where you said if you want to set up the meeting or if you want to invite people and all of that. I, I get directly to the sign in when I click on the video. So you're, are you here on the screen? Yes. Yes. Okay, so you press on the sign in button. Have you signed right. in yet? Because you'd have, to, you'd have to sign in. Yes, I've signed. I always sign in. Yes. And then where's that page that gives you options? The pane that, that gives you options. Like the one that you showed if you want to do, if you want to uh, organize a meeting or do those things, schedule, uh, uh, do a meeting. I, I don't, I didn't see that page. When I sign in, I get directly to the meeting maybe because I've clicked on the bright event right button. I don't know. Maybe that's Oh, it. do you know why? It's probably the event right button because it directly uh, links you to the meeting. So it makes you skip that step so that you can go to the meeting. It's for it's doing it for convenience sake so that you can get straight to the okay. meeting without having to worry okay. about the different functions. Okay, so if I don't go through Eventbrite and I just sign in, I'll get to that main page. Yeah, when you're just doing it on your own time with your own Zoom account and there isn't like, isn't through the Eventbrite or like just separately, privately through your own Zoom, then it will bring you to that page where it has the, the different functions. Okay, perfect. Because I, I never saw it. I always go directly through the Eventbrite and I never saw that option page. Yeah, because Zoom gives you that option where you, when you make a particular event where, you, where it just makes it easier for the people to just get directly in by just... Yes, of course. Yes, it was very easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. No problem. David, it's, it's Rosalind again. Um, have, now you're saying I must sign in. How can I sign in? not through Eventbrite if I don't have an account. If you don't have an account, then- Yeah, well, because I saw, I, I registered for this because they told me, I don't know, was I threw McGill or something and I had to go through Eventbrite. I don't understand this whole thing. I'm confused. So, so for the Eventbrite, it's just for the particular event, they set it up. So it allows people to join in with, and then because it allows people to just join in, you don't need that account. But when you are signing, when there isn't like a specified meeting already created, then if you want to have to be able to navigate through Zoom, you're going to have to create an account. 
but but I wasn't sent any any particulars. I did, wasn't sent the the password or whatever the meeting, you know. Oh, so how? Link. Because it, it really depends. Because uh, if it's if you weren't sent the password but you just pressed the event right, that usually means that the meeting did not have a set ID a set password already. Because you can have the option to have a password, but you can also have the option not to have a password. So if you click the link and it directly brings you to the meeting, that means that that meeting didn't have a set password. Mm -hmm. I'm still confused, but anyways, thank you. Rosalyn, I just want to uh, confirm something with you. So we ask you guys to register on Eventbrite just so we know who is actually participating in each event that we have. Um, this morning, I did send out the separate Zoom link and the meeting ID to everyone who's registered. So if you didn't receive that email, um, let me know. You can send me an email. I'll put my email address in the chat box just to make sure that you receive all of the information that you should before an event. Yeah, when I try, I hadn't I hadn't registered before, and when I went now at ten minutes after twelve to event right, they told me it's closed. Okay, so that's um, why I have to write to you. Yeah, so if you hadn't bought a ticket prior to the uh, event, it is closed for people because you can't. We don't sell tickets while the event is happening. Had you have okay. gotten a ticket for the event uh, when the event was starting, instead of sending you the Zoom link uh, and the password, so you don't need to put that in yourself, you could just click directly through Eventbrite and it brings you directly here. So by that way, you don't need the link or the password. You could just click and Eventbrite brings you directly here if you, if you bought a ticket prior. Yeah, but I bought the ticket prior, but, and I went to Eventbrite and they asked me for th their password to, to enter and that's where they sent me to Zoom. I, you know, I have to enter a password, mm -hmm. which is the, but is there any other way to do other than, I have reserved my ticket. Is there any other way to do it other than going through Eventbrite? Yeah, so um, if, you, if you'd like to attend the meetings or the events, um, just I would still suggest to get the, uh, the ticket on Eventbrite, but we will send out the email prior to the event and the day of the event that will have the Zoom uh, link as well as the password in it if you'd like to just go directly through Zoom if it's easier for you. So this, the link which we got today, can we use it for all the subsequent ones? Yes, the same yes for the Brainy Boomer ones, yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, Sarah, I didn't get this link. It's okay. Roslyn, uh, clink.r at gmail. Let me check. I'll check my email to make sure. David, that was very, very good. Very good presentation. There was a lot of information. Is there any reference to this or any PowerPoint that we could uh, check back on if we, yeah, yeah. Or, so, we have some uh, qu further questions? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, I realized that because I'm using my brother's computer, I was like, why is everyone calling me David? And I'm like, oh, okay, that's why. I'm actually Daniel, but I'm, I had to borrow my brother's okay, computer. Okay, thank you, Daniel. Um, in regards to it, what we'll do is I'll send you the PowerPoint slides as well. Uh, in the link to the PowerPoint, if you guys want to write this down, we do have uh, further, we, you guys can get further support via one on one technical support um that we offer for free in terms of like phone calls and stuff so okay. if you guys can contact one I'll, I'll type it in the group chat let me see so one eight 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 no, and Roslyn, i did send you the email this morning i just checked to match your email address i would suggest maybe checking your junk email sometimes it might go there no, I have, I have something. Techno sort of Zoom workshop is starting now. Access your event online. Access the event. I press that and it brought me to. Um, yeah, that's the automated verify. email from Eventbrite. Verify. I sent you a personal email. Verify your ticket. So this is, and I have to log in and uh, to Eventbrite. So you sent me something else? I sent you a personal email from my uh, email address. No, I didn't get it, and it's not in my junk mail. Okay. Yeah, so I sent it in the group. So it's our phone number. It's our phone number and our um, our website. So you guys can sign up or even call in to essentially get an appointment where you guys can get one-on-one -on -one technical support from one of our skilled volunteers. Uh, and then what I also do is I believe we also created, a, on our website, we also created a blog post on navigating Zoom, so I can also send that material so that it can be distributed out to you guys. Super. 
That's very helpful, thank you. No problem. Um, are there any other questions? So Sarah, what, what, what are we gonna do? I'm gonna send you an email right now just to make sure that you re that you're okay. receiving something. Okay, let's that'll be good. Perfect. Any yes, other one question? Can I ask you how safe is Zoom? Because people give telling us that it's very it's not safe. They're going to steal your data, enter your your hard disk and take all your information. Is that true? To to be honest. Facebook and every social media site and so many platforms steal all your personal information anyways <laughs> that it's 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 not a huge concern because there's so many platforms that take your information anyways that like they, they and also you don't have any that much personal information linked to your zoom account so it's not really much to worry about also you can include a fake name with fake information so it's not a I'm big sorry? You, what can, did you, ask? you can make you can make a fake name with like with fake information um but honestly in terms of video chat platforms it is the most consistent and easy to use platform and all of them inherently with video chat platforms there is going to be a mild issue with uh security um but as long as you set a password password zoom is just as secure as the other ones no, but if I'm sharing my screen with some slides for a presentation I'm doing, can yeah. they? Can no, they... they can't access your screen. They can't actually interact with your screen. All they're doing is seeing your screen. So what you have to do is make sure that you don't show any information on your screen. All you have to do is, for example, with my PowerPoint, I just showed you my PowerPoint. As long as yeah. there's no personal information or anything on the screen, no one can take your information. I see. Yeah. Okay, thank you. No problem. Uh, are there any other questions? All right. Well, thank you so much, Daniel, for uh, this fantastic workshop. The MCSA's Education Committee would like to thank you and everybody who signed up today. Um, our next event is going to be on Friday. It's going to be the first event of our Zoom Health Month, so it's going to be really excited. I encourage everyone to sign up. Um, it's going to be Dr. Michael Weissman uh, with Oral Health, and I've put the link to our event, our event right page down in the chat box. Um, so you can check out uh, Friday's event or any other Brainy Boomer or Health Month event. Um, if you'd like to take a look uh, at this event again, we did record it. It will be on our YouTube page. That link is also down in the chat box. And we would really love to hear your feedback about today's event or any other Brain New Boomer event that you've attended. And that link is also in the chat box. Um, so thank you again for all attending today. And I hope to see you at our next event. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.